cool. Let's go. Um, hey, what's going on, good people? It's Gardner Douglas here with the the uh, the representative from the uh, Chesapeake Bay Foundation and Miss Audrey Swineberg. I just learned how to pronounce her name. Uh, <laughs> hey, Audrey, how you how you doing? Good. Thanks so much for having me on. No doubt. Um, I wanted to bring you on, like I was telling you, um, you know, Chesapeake Bay Foundation does so many great things um, for the Bay and, you know, everything else around it. And I've never had anybody on the podcast about this. And we got this awesome event coming up uh, next week that I just wanted the listeners to know about because uh, I really haven't put a lot about a lot out about it. So I just wanted them to know, you know, what's going on also. So could you just tell us about the Chesapeake Bay Foundation first? Sure. So Chesapeake Bay Foundation was founded in 1967. Um, we have a whole breadth and depth of different activities that we do that ranges from education to advocating to restoration activities. And when all else fails, we do litigate as well. And so our whole mission is to save the bay. Um, and that involves changing changing things on the land and changing things in the water. And so we work with a lot of different people and partners across the Bay to achieve those goals. Um, we have over 300,000 members, um, folks who are members of Chesapeake Bay Foundation. So we couldn't do this alone. Partners really matter. Um, so yeah. And I don't want to get too political, um, but this is like the first thing that kind of hits my mind um, about funding. Like, wasn't it something in the news about either drop funding or funding came back or something like that? Yeah, sure. So for um, years and years, uh, the state of Maryland has supported our education program. I believe that's what you're referring to. And uh, just this year, the Hogan administration pulled back that funding uh, because uh, they wanted to reallocate it to other programs. Um, so unfortunately, that obviously was a big hit for CBF, but Luckily, we work with a lot of different private funders as well, and so we're still able to keep up our impressive programming, uh, literally educating thousands, tens of thousands of students every single year all about the Bay in their backyard. Right. That's a beautiful thing. I think that's where it comes from or where it starts anyway. It's just that education because a lot of people, everybody knows that, you know, we want to make a healthy Bay and we want to, um, you know, have a healthy ecosystem but they don't quite know how or, you know, what's nearby them or where they can even, you know, contribute or volunteer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, education and educating people about the uh, issues is very important. So I'm glad you guys are like killing it over there in that aspect. And, you know, it's really important, you know, education, I think, is the first step. And certainly when people are young, I think as CBF, we do a really good job of trying to make it easy for people to key into different activities so that they can raise their voice. So if folks are interested in doing more to raise their voice for clean water, go to cbf.org slash action center. And that's where you can key into the live petitions that we have and different ways that people can volunteer and things like that. So we love getting people involved. No doubt. Um, do you um, participate in like the whole, uh, what is it? Um, oh man, I think, I guess is like part more part on like the lobbying, I guess. Yeah, certainly. So, so as CBF, we certainly um, lobby and advocate um, at within all the states. So uh, CBF has uh, offices in Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Virginia, as well as um, last year, we opened a federal office. So we work with government relations in all of those places to advocate for the appropriate policies and budgets that are needed to, to save the Bay. Cool. And what about, um, I had a question on the tip of my tongue because it had to do with it. Um, can't remember now. It'll come back to me. Um, <laughs> There's one example kind of to put a story behind it, if that's helpful. So my particular job at CVF is I coordinate the Chesapeake Oyster Alliance. And so that's a coalition of 60 different organizations across Maryland, Virginia, all working for oyster recovery. And so one of the ways that we have um, advocated, you know, you can say lobbying 
um, is by doing these sign-on letters. So right now, our aquaculture farmer partners are really hurting, right, with the disruptions from COVID-19 and major market shifts that they've all had to pivot with. Um, right. And so we advocated with USDA as well as Congress to make sure that the aquaculture industry was not forgotten in um, funding relief packages. And so we were able to bring that to the federal government to say, hey, the current support is not proportionate to how big of an industry it is. You need to bump that up. And so we're continuing to fight for the industry because we do truly believe that aquaculture is an incredibly important part of the Bay because it's private industry invested in getting more oysters in the Bay. Just from your, your standpoint, your viewpoint, you know, it doesn't have to be um, the foundation viewpoint, but how do you think the, uh, the oyster industry is going to, uh, I guess, um, rebound from this whole COVID-19 thing because like the restaurants have been hit hard. Um, the good thing is that oyster farms are now more in contact with the people that are, you know, direct consumer. Um, but well, how do you think this is going to go forward? Like, it's going to be some big changes. Oh, yeah, and most definitely. I mean, I, I've been so impressed seeing how the partners pivoted from their traditional market outlets of, you know, working with distributors or directly with restaurants and suddenly cold shipping oysters, you know, or doing these, you know, pop-up pickup situations. I've been so impressed. What I hope that this drives is seeing more home consumption of oysters, folks working directly with farmers and eating oysters at home. I would like that to get more normalized personally, because I think that that's great if people can have a relationship with their aquaculture farmer. Um, and, you know, I, who knows what the restaurant industry is going to look like, right? Like that, right. that's ch very, very challenging. So I think all the work that folks are doing for that direct to consumer marketing is phenomenal. And, um, as the foundation, we're working to support that. Um, we've got coming up some oyster pop-up sales that we're doing at some of our CBF events and opening that up to our farmer partners so that they can key in and you know reach even more customers and we can blast wow. it through our promotion too. Right, that's great, that's awesome. So right now, like, what are our goals of just kind of change the subject? What are our goals for the Chesapeake Bay right now? Like, where are we at? Where are we at? That's a good question. So every two years, CBF puts out um, what they what we call the State of the Bay report. Mm -hmm. And so we are we are working. We you know, there's a bunch of different parameters involved in that from fisheries to pollution reduction to how well our underwater grass is doing. And I probably should know the letter that we're at right now. Off the top of the head, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> uh, but basically, we are, I believe we are at um, a D plus right now. And the highest we've ever been had been a C minus. Um, and we dropped to a D plus, And that was related to the 2018. We had record rainfalls. Um, right, right. And, and so with that came a lot of extra pollution entering the bay. Um, and that was also contributed to lower salinity, which affected our oyster population. So, you know, sadly, that record rainfall is related to climate change, right? We're going to see more and more extreme weather events as climate change continues. And so right. I think climate change is an incredibly important challenge for us to work on. And will, if we work on climate change, that will benefit the Bay as well. For sure, for sure. Just, um, and we'll, we'll get into the uh, event coming up next week shortly, but just to uh, give some tips, I guess, um, for like uh, the listeners, like what can they do to help climate change? Oh, great question. Um, so, I mean, I think on a individual level, there's a lot exactly. all of us can do, right? Um, so just right. kind of those smaller changes, you know, choosing to bike instead of drive when possible. But I think it really, again, goes back to we need to put pressure on our government to do bigger actions because, yeah. you know, there's only so much each of us can individually do. And so right. advocating with your elected officials is incredibly important. I like that. I like the way you put it, because like we I think for some reason it is a lot of pressure on us as individuals, but it should be more pressure on the bigger guys who mm -hmm. have a bigger uh, what's that, footprint. Yeah. um that they're leaving behind and uh you know it's I'm, I'm i really love this podcast because you know it pushes me to learn more and like 
I just had no idea like how big the issues are, you know, and now I'm following uh what's her name? Miss Greta uh Thornburger. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. Like yeah. I'm like, yo, this little girl, sixteen she's year old, <laughs> is like she's giving it to everybody. Like you should be ashamed. Our house is on fire. You know, I'm all, I'm all on it. Like, but uh definitely, yeah, it is a. Uh, yeah, we can do some things, but it's really on us to, uh, you know, reach out to our elected officials to make that call. To push for that change, yeah. I think something else that's certainly a very current topic, and I'm very proud of CBF right now, is, you know, obviously there's all these protests right now going on, and I'm very proud of CBF just yesterday put out a statement saying that Black Lives Matter. And oh, wow. CBF is more and more really speaking out to the fact of we need diversity everywhere, right? We need biodiversity in our bay to have a healthy, thriving bay. And we need diversity, you know, in our human communities as well. And we need to push for that just as much because that is racism. Stop, like racism doesn't help us with our goals for the Bay. We have to address that as part of a wider Saving the Bay effort. So I'm very proud of CBF for pushing for environmental justice. Wow, that's really beautiful. That's, be that's big, that's a huge step. It and really is because, and I didn't realize, well, of course, I try and not get too political or, you know, uh, cross, you know, those, those conversations you don't have because, you know, I find myself in circles and, you never know what circle as an oyster trucker I'm going to be in. Sure. So I try to, you know, of course, leave the big ones out like religion and politics. But, you know, now it's kind of, it's, it's to the point where you have to take some type of, you got to do something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you can't just sit by because if you sit by and not say anything, then things just keep going the way it is. Yep. And, uh, you know, it's definitely time for changes. So I'm, I'm really proud that CBF, you know, others might think that that's tangential to our work. And I'm just so proud that CBF is owning it and saying this is this is a big problem and we need to address it as well. And so we're looking Thank internally as an organization, as well as figuring out how can we partner our external work as well, be even stronger. So that's great. Thank you guys at CBF. Appreciate that. All right. Let's talk about the event we got coming up this week. So this is like, I guess, a bi-monthly, I was reading an event you guys know, or as part of a series, or how does that work? Yeah, so it's the Brock Learning Series. So, you know, pre-COVID, this was a live uh, um, talk that happened at Brock Environmental Center. So that's our office down in Virginia Beach. And uh -huh. these are, I believe, monthly, historically, monthly events where we bring in external experts as well as CBF staff and they're on different topics. You know, sometimes it's all about dolphins in the bay or this one's on fisheries. And so things that are interesting to people so that they can deepen their knowledge about the bay. And so our event is next Tuesday, June 9th, 2020. Um, it's gonna be from 6.30 to 7.30. It's a free event, but you do need to register in advance. Um, I can drop a link hopefully to you Gardner and you can spread spread that far and wide yep. and it's going to be it's going to be really fun so you know the title is the bounty of the bay a dive into our fisheries and so we'll be looking at um, oysters we've got um, Tommy Leggett from Chessie Seafood um, he's in Gloucester Point in Virginia um, so Tommy's going to be on you're going to do a shucking demo which I'm really excited about yep. I think that can sometimes be a barrier for folks getting oysters for the first time at home so really right. glad to have you on um, we have a couple other fin fish um, watermen coming on as well. And then I'll be talking about our work as the Chesapeake Oyster Alliance advocating at the federal level. And then Chris Moore is a CBF staff scientist who works on fisheries issues. So he'll be speaking as well. And we have one more scientist who's going to be talking about uh, blue crabs as well. So a long nice. list of people. So it'll be an engaging hour. <laughs> For sure. I got a lot of questions for him about the crabs. I'm telling you, I've been trying to get some crabs and like the prices are skyrocketed this year. I'm like oh, really? really surprised. Yeah. I kind of thought that the price would be down, but they're, they're really expensive right now. Interesting. I wonder, I wonder if that's because they don't have as many folks buying and so they're upping the price to try and cover their losses where I, I wonder I have no idea that's interesting that's the only thing I can come up with but you know I'll, I'll ask the professional and see what he says maybe he has a 
inside scoop or something. I know that the dredge surveys came back well. The, the, the crabs are doing better this year from the, the winter dredge survey that came out. So that's Right, that's what I was reading. Yeah, so oh, I'm really... It's Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I just work really... with the charismatic rocks that are oysters. I don't, I don't know about crabs. <laughs> right, right. So I'm really excited to uh, do the event next week, and I hope everyone goes and register. It is free again, you guys. And, um, you know, I'll be giving you a shucking tutorial and get, letting you know everything you need to know about shucking at home or on your own or wherever you're at in the backyard. Um, but come on out and uh, tune in. You can learn about some uh, fin fish. You can learn about some crabs. Um, some good stuff. And um, thank you so much for joining us today, Miss Audrey. Yeah, no, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be on. Looking forward and, to And um, of course, I'll leave the uh, link in this description and um, hopefully we can have a big turnout. Anything else? Did I miss anything? No, that's great. Thank you so much. Really no, thank you. I, I appreciate you for reaching out and, you know, we can hopefully we can make this thing a success. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. All right, stay safe. All right, so then end recording. <laughs> cool. Oh, yeah, and it's crazy because I was on the screen. I was trying to put, I'm used to, you know, recording and everything, but uh -huh. thank you yeah, so yeah, much yeah. for doing that. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, no problem.